In problem number 47 of section 3.8, we're given a dynamical system consisting of three particles, and we're given a little bit of information about each one. We know their uh, initial velocity is zero, we know uh, what their initial position is, and we know that upon each uh, particle there's a constant force acting on it. Now, we're asked to find the acceleration of the center of mass, and we're going to do this in two different ways, and hopefully this will show you how convenient the center of mass, uh, or how convenient uh, Newton's second law can be in finding problems um, such as this one regarding the center of mass. So the first way we're going to do it is going to be a little lengthy. What we're going to do is we're going to find um, formulas for the positions of each particle, and then just use um, the formula for to find, or use that to find a position formula for the center of mass, and then just take its second derivative to find the acceleration. And the second way is we'll just consider um, the whole system as just a point mass um, at the center, uh, located at the center of mass, and just calculate the total force act acting on the system. But for the first part, though, um, let me define each of the position functions. And we know that uh, each of the particles is governed by uh, Newton's second law, so F1 equals M1 times A1. Let me write this in terms of I so we can find a general formula uh, for the acceleration of the ith particle. So this means that acceleration of particle I is equal to Fi over Mi. So let's write A1 is going to be equal to two-thirds zero. A2 will be zero negative four over six, which is negative two-thirds. And A3 is uh, negative one-fourth zero. So to find a uh, formula for the position, well, we can first find a formula for the velocity. And we can do that just by integrating the acceleration. So formula for the velocity is going to be equal to uh, Fi over Mi t plus the initial velocity. But we're given that the initial velocity of each particle is zero, so we can just Ignore that term. And this means that position function of each particle is going to be given by, well, F by over Mi uh, times T squared. I'll have to divide by 2 uh, plus the initial position of the ith particle. Let's use this to find the three position uh, functions. We've got position of particle one. This is going to be one half times uh, this whole thing here is uh, equal to one half ai, which we already found. So this is um, let's see, a one is two thirds zero, so one half of that is one third zero times t squared plus position, initial, initial position of the first particle and it's given as just zero, zero. So position of the first particle at time t is just given by one third t squared on the first coordinate and zero in the second. All right, the second particle is going to be given by, or the position of the second particle is going to be given by, well, one half uh, times the acceleration of the second, so it's zero, negative one third, t squared, plus position, uh, initial position of the second particle, which is two, three. So that becomes 2 in the first coordinate and 3 minus 1 third t squared in the second. 
And for the last um, the last particle, the position is, let's see, negative one quarter. Well, one half times um, a three, so negative uh, one eighth uh, zero t squared plus the initial position of the third particle, which is negative one, negative three. And let's see, that's equal to minus one minus uh, one eighth t squared and minus three in the second coordinate. So now we have uh, the three uh, position functions, and since we're given them three masses as well, we can just use this to find a formula for uh, for the center of mass at any for the position of the center of mass at any given time t. This is just the usual formula: sum of the moments over the sum of the masses. So, uh, first position is one-third t squared. And I'm going to multiply that by the first mass, which is 3. And second mass is equal to 6. Multiply that by the second position function. So 2 in the first coordinate and 3 minus 1 third t squared in the second. And finally we'll have, let's see, the third, uh, third mass is 12 times negative 1, negative 1 eighth t squared in the first coordinate and minus 3 in the third coordinate, or in the second coordinate. And we'll divide all that by the sum of the masses, which is 3 plus 6 plus 12. That's 21. So this is equal to, well, let's just uh, simplify the numerator. We get, we have 1 over 21 times t squared uh, 0 plus 12 uh, comma 18 minus 2t squared plus uh, minus 12 minus 3 over 2t squared comma minus 36. So in the first coordinate, uh, let's see, 12s cancel out, and we're left with t squared uh, minus 3 halves t squared. And in the second coordinate, we have 0, uh, 18 minus 36, so minus 18, and minus 2t squared. So this ultimately becomes let's see t squared over twenty one minus three over forty two t squared comma minus eighteen over twenty one minus two t squared over twenty one. And now we're almost there because that gives us a formula, formula for the position of the center of mass. We're really interested in the acceleration. So to find the velocity, we can just uh, take the derivative of the position function. And that's just going to be 2t over 21. 
Um, let's see, I'm not sure why I wrote it this way, but it would be easier if we wrote the first coordinate as just minus 1 half t squared. So if we do that, we get uh, minus or minus 1 half t squared and then uh, over 21, so minus 1 over 42. So when we take the derivative, uh, we get minus 2 over 42 or 1 over 21 t. And in the second coordinate, uh, the constant term goes to 0, and we have minus uh, 4t over 21. So now the acceleration is going to be given by the second derivative, so the derivative of velocity, and both of these um, only have a single t in them, so we take the derivative. The first coordinate will be minus 1 over 21, and the second coordinate will be minus 4 over 21. So that gives us the, finally, after all that work, gives us the acceleration of um, the center of mass at any given time t, which is constant with negative 1 over 21 um, units of acceleration in the x direction. Acceleration in the y direction is negative 4 over 21. So that was a lot of work just for that little bit of information. If we had considered instead the system to be just a single point mass located at the center of mass, uh, with the mass just being uh, sum of all the masses. So say if we had three points, um, mass one, mass two, and mass three. If we just considered that all is just a single mass, um, is it just equal to the sum of the masses uh, located at the center of mass? Uh, well, then we could have, or then we could use um, just sum all of the forces together and consider those, that total force just acting on the sum of the masses at the center of mass. In other words, sum of forces is equal to sum of masses times the acceleration of, um, of the center of mass. This means that the acceleration of the center of mass uh, is equal to sum of the forces over the sum of the masses. And let's see, the sum of the forces will be 2, 0 plus 0, negative 4 plus negative 3, 0. all over, and we know the sum of the masses is just 21. So this is equal to, we have negative 1 in the first coordinate, and negative 4 in the second coordinate, over 21. And that gives us the same answer that we got before, which is a good thing that our answers agree, but also see that the second method is considerably less work than everything we had to do in the first way to, uh, or in the first, everything we had to do in the first method to uh, get the acceleration of the center of mass.